Oh, you're looking my gobstopper. Strike that. Reverse it. Fancy punks! Lick my place! Rainy! It'll be 10 minutes where it's like a Steven Soderbergh. Ocean's Eleven movie. It's all slick and funny and stuff. Then just the most horrific shit imaginable will happen. It's because that's what the fucking movie's about, you asshole. Uh, this fucking guy. The Tree of Life is freaking awesome. I'm sure you think it is. Made it to black. Oh, you are I'm fucking this up. Beyond slimes. I said I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash your brains in. Been a cinematique where I like, uh, you know, I like the sets and I like all that stuff. What did you say? Cinematique? I don't know. Jared Leto, man. You're the worst, dude. If you, if, if you ever listen to this, Jared Leto, you are the fucking worst. Like, but I'd rather watch that dude, the English dude, who looks like he's not done yet. <laughs> so, hell, counselor, we are now in the ninth circle. The circle of traitors. Traitors to the country. Traitors to the fellow man. Traitors to God. You look like a stun mallet, mate. Let's go. <laughs> what? This movie is the opposite of getting like. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to all our listeners who have been listening to us for over a year now. Subscribe to us on Apple iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and any other platform that has podcasts. Visit our Patreon page, become a Patreon, to get more additional content. Again, we appreciate you listening and keep watching those movies. Now, on with the show. I'm so happy to be married. Ha ah, ha 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 ha! How lovely to be married. He loves me. Oh, indubitably. He loves me. Oh, for sure. I wish for just one boy. Bluefield! Honey! She's not moving. She's. She's just resting. I will have a martini. Shaken, not stirred. I watched a movie I'd never seen before. I watched a movie I'd never seen before. I watched a movie I'd never seen before. All right, you blokes. It's double O negative and double O zero and double O double zero. Lee Bridges, Doug Wall, and Garrick Lane. This is the Bond version of Tales from the Video Store. Brought to you by Table Rock Creative. Stop wasting your money on advertising. Call us today. TableRockCreative.com Now, on with the show. Welcome to Double Zero. And double O negative to the Tales from the Video Store Lair. How are we doing this week? Are you supposed to be? Are you fucking M or are you fucking Q? Who 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 I, are you? I, are you Doctor Claw? Or are you fucking Blofeld? I am Blofeld. Okay. <laughs> How are we doing? Oh well, we've got a big big announcement this week. Big announcement, just like the opener. Um, and we hate to uh, put Doug's new wife on the chopping Between block. the crosshairs, yeah, right? Between the crosshairs. But congratulations to Doug. He was married on Saturday. Uh, yep, after six months. Yes, congratulations, Doug. Like Thank you, Lee. Been together 16 years. Something like that. She yeah. finally put you in a fence. <laughs> I'll put the fence Or in the room. other way around. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, it was a beautiful wedding, and uh, I left early to ensure that I didn't wake up and feel like a total asshole the next day. I stayed to the very <laughs> end and paid for it dearly. <laughs> uh, my, wife, my wife was like, you could stay, and I'm like, I know I could stay. I shouldn't, though. Yeah. <laughs> I should go Steve and Amanda like Amanda was so... Woo! I was like, it's just going to get worse and worse. I'm going to get out of here now. <laughs> that was a good time. Yes, it was a wonderful time. So anyway, Lee, how was your week? It was pretty good. So what are you working now? Are you working from home? 
No, I'm working. I'm working uh, uh, back in Facebook. Okay, so you're, you're are you back on like every day? Yeah, Monday through Friday. Nice. Oh wow. Okay. Right. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I was. I just got laid back off again. As quick as I got. Um, as quick as I got that job cutting the, the TV show, we wrapped the show, and now they have nothing else for me to do for two months. Yeah, something will come along. Next next time, I'm going to work slower so that I can keep it longer. I mean, that's that's ultimately like, right. I mean, work slower. There you go. Well, it depends on how you're getting paid. Are you getting paid hourly or are you getting paid, hey, get the work done and it's a flat rate? If it's a flat rate, get the no, shit done as no, quick as you it can. Was, it was, uh, it's hourly. It's a weekly, well, then yes. Weekly salary. Then it's like, oh, you did it all. You did it really fast. It's awesome. Now, bye. Yeah, you kind of, yeah. <laughs> Well, then take a couple of siestas next time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Something. Jeez. Good job. It's a, Hey, it's, uh, in the words of a great man, it's, a, it's always, it's always the worst to be the fastest and best guy with a shovel. <laughs> that means you're always going to be digging the ditches. All right, well, anyway, we got news. Let's get on with it while we're talking about our social lives, even though, you know, uh, huge things have changed this week. Nothing's changed, dude. I know. But, hey. The only thing that's changed, I got a fucking thing on my finger. That's it. And on Facebook, her last name is Wall now. Yay! There you go. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, Facebook's official right now. Official what? Fa- Facebook, Facebook is so powerful that it was able to block... The president of the United States or former president of the United States. Who gives a shit? Well, I don't, but I just think, I think that that's, that's just crazy to me. But anyway, we're not politics. Who's got some news? I got some news. So hey, your news. Tanya Roberts passed as we speak about James Bond, but did she pass? Didn't she arise? Didn't all the plastic surgery that she had gotten in the many years since the Bond days, did, did maybe some of her uh, organs were plastic as well? I'm going to chill the fuck out and not just reach across this desk and smack those <laughs> fucking glasses off your head for even bringing up something so fucking disturbing as you just did. She looked like the Cheshire Cat. She's a goddamn it. angel. <laughs> Always has been, always will be. One of my favorites. Uh, I, I love it. But her. apparently what happened was her boyfriend had, call, I guess, called her publicist and told him he said his last goodbye to her. And her publicist took that as, oh, she's dead. Right. Oh, oh no, that's just, when he went back to church. just a huge misunderstanding. <laughs> he called that one one right before he went back to put his uh, hands around her neck. And then realized that she had so much surgery done on her skin that she, he actually couldn't physically crush her larynx by chugging her. You motherfucker. <laughs> so he took a pillow to her. To, to her face. <laughs> and then he realized that her lungs were plastic too. And that they were going to withstand the force of the pillow. And then, in, and then in sheer luck, she just passed away. Through all the trauma of the moment. Is that correct? I Am think I I here? Any of that's correct, man. <laughs> I, I think that it was that she had a, like a UTI and just it got septic. So her vagina was also plastic and maybe at some point in time the pee hole melted and the <laughs> The scientific term, the pee hole, <laughs> melted. God, that is like that's the worst. That that's like the worst mental picture I can come maybe up her with. Her boyfriend and her liked candle play, and it got a little bit ruptured, a little bit melted, and her pee stopped coming out, and she got a UTI. I don't know. Actually, you know what? We love Tanya Roberts. I'm not giving her a hard time, although. Be You're sick. not? God, what do you call <laughs> that? I see if you were. <laughs> hey, so what so so that's what happened? I didn't I didn't read that, that's that. what I that's what I kind yeah, of read. She, she died of an infection. Yeah. Mm. Something that probably could 
from the way it sounded, it probably could have been, you know, if it would have been taken care of beforehand, she probably would be fine. Which brings me some news, um, some some bad news. Uh, Lee knew him, uh, and I think you knew him too. Oh yeah. Uh, our my good buddy Adam Parlier passed away Sunday from kind of the same thing. Had a uh, had some had some he had Crohn's disease and had some abdomen um, infection that just kind of got out of hand yeah. fast and. Uh, he became septic and uh, passed away. His kidneys and liver failed. And, man, I tell you what, Adam loved movies. And he, um, he every time he'd come to the office, he'd bring me some toy. And he was a... The only, only thing I disagreed with him is he, man, he loved Rob Zombie movies. I mean, loved them. And every time I talked to him, we'd have to argue about how much I hated him and, and how much he loved him. Yeah. But uh, rest in peace, Adam, man. We love you. Thanks for all your work on all our films in the, the past. And we'll uh, we'll be making another one, man. Uh, we'll be um, we definitely uh, tributing you on it. It's a pretty sad day. Yeah, you will be missed. Yeah. yeah. He always meant he was always wanting to come on a podcast, too. And I think we even mentioned a couple times bringing him on just to thrash yeah. him. But I think, I think the consensus was... Well, if we're going to talk about, we, we don't need to talk about Rob Zombie films anymore because we thrash them so much <laughs> no, that that would just be like kicking a dead horse. So I don't know. So we missed our chance. Now, now looking back, I wish that you know, we, had, we yeah. had done it yeah. because then we would have uh, a legacy of uh, Adam being on the show one time after he begged me so many times to be on it. So any other news we got going on? Well, I mean, sort of uh, connected to uh, James Bond, MGM is apparently for sale. Still. And uh, uh, no, no one has bought it as of yet. It's like the rundown trailer park at the end of my uh, street. It's, nobody wants to buy it. There's nothing, exactly. there's nothing left in it. It's, it's in shambles. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, oh, I did read uh, another thing about, um, you know, since this is Bond Month, Steven Soderbergh actually turned down uh, directing uh, a James Bond movie. Hmm. Said that uh, there had been many talks and lots of conversations and uh, quote verbatim, we got to the 10 yard line and I just couldn't get it into the end zone. I'm going to think that that is probably, uh, especially, that's what he said. I read it. Why are you looking at me like that? Dude, I just love it when you say things like quote verbatim. Oh, yeah. It, you might as well have said masturbate, masturbate. Anyway, continue. <laughs> okay. Well, um, uh, you know, right after that, they, they approached Danny Boyle as well about, uh, uh, wait, to so, say, yeah, he had, wait, did right. Danny Boyle. So this was for the newest one. Yeah, Danny Boyle didn't direct that though, did he? No, no, uh, Kerry, uh, the guy who did uh, the first season of True Detective did. Fu- yeah, yeah, Kerry yeah, that's Fuji. what I thought. Okay, Fukunaga. so that's, sorry, I was thinking, my brain and yeah. what I was reading was messing with me. But yes, yeah, so, but Danny Boyle uh, ultimately turned down James Bond too. Yeah, he was going to do it, then he, uh, he uh, yeah, he left the project before they started filming. Well, it's, I mean, neither one of those guys are James, I just don't think they're James, they, their style is just not James Bond material. Danny Boyle, no. I think, could definitely pull it off because he's pretty eclectic in his style. Well, yeah, a hundred, uh, what was that, 127 hours? Yeah. That one's pretty Hollywood. It was pretty... I, I think done. he could have done it. Right. I'm not so I'm, sure about Soderbergh. Soderbergh, though, would be super interesting because if he made it in kind of a low-budget kind of style with, like, grainy grainy cameras and, and all this... You know, funky music. I mean, it could have... quick cuts and his subtitles. could have kind of had, like, it's really its own thing, and that might have been, you know, interesting. Who knows? That's what I always love about Steven Soderbergh movies. It looks, and he he actually actually does, but it looks like it was cut on my laptop. It's basically a full movie that he just put together on the laptop. There's nothing fancy. The cuts are simple. Yeah. Everything's simple. Titles are simple. There's not many effects. You don't see many effects. That's how he does it. Ah, that's why it's so good. That's why we love them. Uh, is it MGM uh, Bond material? Probably not. <laughs> Just because. Unless, like you said, uh, it would have to be its own 
It had to be its, you know, its own thing, I guess. But, right. But but I, I, I would be, I, it would, it would if I could talk to Soderbergh, I bet a million dollars he would say, I didn't want to go through the whole protocol. If Jim probably gave him the book. The, the manual, protocol manual that we talk about, yeah. Here's the manual to shooting the James Bond book, uh, James Bond book. Uh, Series and you have to follow this. I think it was probably verbatim, like that verbatim quote. You have to follow this book. Probably like that up till Daniel Craig, yeah. because I, I think at the end of Brosnan they realized that okay, we've we need to change this and and maybe give somebody a little bit more freedom to kind of make what they want. Yeah, Sam Mendes. That's what I'm saying. And yeah. It showed in in Casino Royale. It's, it's it might be my favorite. Yeah, yeah I mean it's. It's awesome, yeah. Because it's it's so different from, like you can't compare it to the Brazen movies. They don't even look like the same. It's not even like the same character right. outside right. of the name, you know. Um, that's why I like it so much, and that's why once Craig goes away, I don't want this to happen again. Like I don't want to see how it starts again. I want somebody to come in with a fresh idea, you know, and then take it for a couple Go of from movies, there. right? Because if it's just going to be a singular director every time, you know, and, and it's, they're not going to have, it's not going to be like, uh, you know, a, a connecting story like these last few have been. I don't know how good it'll be, you know, because I think we've beaten that to death through the 70s, 80s, and, and 90s and early 2000s. You know? Right. I mean, maybe I'm wrong because it's really the essence of Bond. You know, in the movie that we watched is very much this. It's 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 like it's just a one off, but I, I don't know. A lot of them are, you know. Well the, well, the, well, the Bond continuity is so weird, right? That's the thing. Yeah. It's it it has continuity continuity in in certain contexts, and, and it does in other ways. Yeah, and that's what it's makes like it so hard. Inches yeah. M throughout the Brosnan years, and then. Uh, you know, uh, Casino Royale is a prequel, but she's still, but she's still the boss. Yes, but she's not the original boss. So it really, it you really just kind of have to take it. You know, don't take, don't, don't pay too much attention to the continuity. Right, and I agree with that. And unless it's like intended, which I think it is most, you know, it's extremely intended in these last, these last four movies. All, oh, the, yeah, all the all the Daniel Craig's, I mean, they're all intricately connected, and that's what I think makes them very cool. Where you know the Brosnan ones, none of those movies were connected to each other in any way, right? right. None outside of just having Brosnan as Bond. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Tanya Roberts, and we're talking about Bond, man. Who was your favorite Bond girl? Who are you asking? Well, I don't know. Why do you guys? Uh, I mean, I can tell you mine, but uh, I was going to wait and see what you guys said first. I guess my, my favorite would be the one from tonight's movie, Di- Diana Rigg and, uh, on, on Her Majesty's Secret Service. She's awesome. Because she's not, just a, she's not just a standard one. She's, you know, she's in the story for a reason. Like a lot of the, uh, mo- the girls, if you cut them out of the movie, the movie doesn't, you know, it doesn't change the movie at all. Yeah. Like one that uh, Garrick mentioned where we were off, off mic a couple minutes ago, Denise Richards. There's a movie, there's a Bond movie where Denise Richards plays, I shit you not, a nuclear physicist. <laughs> Which is one of the least believable things in all of Bondum. It really is. And, and, and actually, I'll go ahead and touch on my absolute least favorite Bond girl, and that is Denise Richards. Mm. And it, uh, yeah, I know, I'm, I'm, oh, Doug's really going to hate this. And my second least... Is fucking that goddamn careful now? Okay. Mayday from a view to a kill. Grace Jones is fucking terrible. She's not really. I, I mean, okay. She's terrible. She, but, well, she's more the head henchman. Than she's a Bond. henchman. She's like yeah, Jaws I, or like one of the other Bond henchmen. Oh, uh, yeah. she's still a hot. She still. She was still cast in that movie to be a hot woman. She was cast in that movie, so James Bond could fuck her. <laughs> and he does. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I mean, I'm just saying. Oh, yeah, and you're, and you're, you're, you're absolutely Because right. there are Bond girls, and then they're like chicks that Bond bangs in movies. 
Mayday was a chick that Bond banged in a movie who's not the Bond girl. The Bond girl is, of course, Dana Roberts. Yeah, and, yes. That's true. That's that's very true. And in 1985, when this came out, she is just absolutely perfect. And that's why she might be my favorite Bond girl. Another Bond girl that I really like, I just always thought she was sexy, and I really enjoyed this role is uh, Sophie Marceau in The World Is Not Enough. She is... Um, I don't know if she's really the Bond girl or not. Because now she's, she's kind no, of... She's actually the villain of the movie. She's kind of the villain of the movie, even though she kind of plays a Bond girl, I guess, for the first half of it. Right, it's kind of a, it's kind of a switcheroo. You think Robert Carlyle's the big bad villain, and, yeah. the end, and basically... It turns out he's sort of the henchman and she's the villain. Right. Right. Which, uh, Michael Apad, the director of that movie, passed away about two days ago. Yes, I saw that. Hmm. Well, I didn't even know to bring that up. Yeah. That, that could be the best Brosnan Bond. I think it it is. It's my yeah. favorite. I like GoldenEye, too. Yeah. GoldenEye's not terrible, but between those two, there that's the highlight of it. And then... He made four, am I correct? Yeah. The first two were, I thought, were pretty good, and the last two were, well, pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. Even though I don't think that Brosnan was a bad Bond, I just think, you know, like I said, the stories were just, they they were just terrible fucking stories, really. Yeah. You know. And also, after the fall of communism, I don't think they really, it took them a while to figure out how to do Bond. Right, that's a good point, Lee. Very good point. They should have just. What about you, uh, uh, Garrett? Well, my favorite is 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 very recent, and it's not one of my favorite Bond movies. But Jinx, Holly Berry, and Die Another Day is just Holly Berry and anything is. They almost gave her her own movie. They should have. Uh, every, as long as she's not playing Catwoman, they should. have. <laughs> she. She's still like her. Her uh, just with uh, ja- uh, with um, John Wick. I mean, I just don't know. I've just always had a thing for. Is she ever her. gonna age? Any? I mean, Boomerang that move. I know, right? And she was so hot in Boomerang with Eddie Murphy. I mean, she's actually prettier than Robin Gibbons in that movie, and that's hard to do. It's hard to get prettier, more pretty than Robin Gibbons, and she did. To, and I and I, I honestly actually liked Eva Green and Casino Royale. Something about her, she's her she's got a little. I mean, I hate to say it, but she's got a little slut face that is quite appeasing. And maybe that's what I like about it. It's something in the eyes and the and something. Yeah, I, I I know exactly what you mean there. That's a good one. I like that. Caroline uh, Caroline Monroe in Spy Who Loved Me. She was yep. great, and so and um, so was uh, we just talked Maud Adams. There have been a... There's a bunch of them. I mean, we could go on and on. This could be like its own thing. Yeah. This could be a second podcast where we just talk about each Bond We could have just done a whole whole show just on the Bond girls. Easily. Easily. And it it could have been three hours long. Yep. Uh, Easily. Yeah. Well, then uh, then we should get going then. Because we could be here all day if we're talking about women. And we could also... We could also definitely uh, hurt the uh, hashtag Me Too movement if we continue to talk about it. So let's get going. Well, Garrett, I'm pretty sure your Tanya Roberts rant uh, didn't do us any favors as far as women go. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that time has passed. <laughs> yeah, and, so, and one of our listeners right now is turning off going, is, did, did, that guy, did that asshole start the show talking terrible about a woman and now he's trying to turn around? A dead and, woman. <laughs> That you you basically said was a fucking cyborg. <laughs> yeah. That's that's how but, the show starts. Hey, but half these girls, James Bond now, if you look at them, if you look at pictures of them now, the ones that are still living, they are half cyborgs. <laughs> they are. Hey, hey, Halle Berry may be one of the only ones that isn't. She might be the lead cyborg. She may. She may just have the best fucking doctor in the world. Who fucking knows? She looks the exact same as she did in 1991. How? So, so it's 2021. So it's What's the fuck's happening? She was 30 back then, right? Right. Okay. You may be right. She may have a better doctor than the rest of them. 
The best that money can buy. The best that money can buy. Yeah, yeah but she looks great. John Wick, she's in good shape. She looks great in everything, like you said. Hey, is Grace Jones still alive? Yeah. I believe so. I wonder where she is, and I wonder what she looks like. I wonder if she looks like the Cheshire Cat. Like well, she Rocky. was in Boomerang, too, and I think she ranked third on that list. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Let's get into it. What's the movie? I, I've actually forgotten. <laughs> no, uh, it's uh, uh, from 1969. It's Honor Majesty's Secret Service. It was the first non-Connery Bond, which I think kind of hurt it at the time. Yes. And uh, I guess it's most famous for two things. One being, the, you know, George Lazenby, he's the only actor who's only played Bond once. And also, James Bond gets married in the movie. Okay, wait, real, real quick, uh, librarian, archive. Why did he only play it once? He, uh, there's well, there's conflicting stories. So, uh, I've heard people say his agent told him not to sign the contract because they tried to sign him to basically the contract that Roger Moore got. Right. He says he just wasn't into it. Like he heard, like you know, people were getting like half a million dollars to, you know, you go to Italy for a month to shoot a spaghetti western and get half a million dollars, or you get, or he's like, I got a million to play James Bond, but it took six months to film it. Yeah. You know, and he just, he's like, he thought, you know, the 60s were coming to an end. He thought it was over. He didn't think Bond was going to be as popular. But ba- I don't know. Basically, we'll never know. He wasn't an actor before, though. This was no, his he first. Was a, he, was a car, he was a part-time model and a car salesman. This right. was his he first. So fuck does he care? That was his He basically bullshitted told. his way into the part. Right. So what, I, so what I'm saying is how him not signing that contract and staying as Bond is his own damn fault. Oh, it absolutely is. And I think he would probably admit that now. You know, considering the fact how his career went, which was nowhere. It's it's not like Steven Soderbergh, who could make 60 different, but has already made, you know, he's already gotten, he's been the only uh, director ever to be nominated twice in the Oscars in one year. He could go in there and do it and decide not to do it. This guy comes off the street and goes, yeah, I don't know. Eh, yeah, well, that's his own dumbass fault. I would have taken any of that. Yeah, he almost... Six he almost, shit. He kind of... God, six... He kind of has that, like... He seems like a fucking idiot and, like, full of himself asshole on screen. And right. if he's anything like his fucking character, the way he played Bond, then there's no fucking... There's no doubt in my mind that people probably got sick and tired of him before he ever even got started. Right. That may be right. Apparently, he was rather difficult. Like, like your boy, uh, the the fucking writer of uh, that goddamn Boondock Saints movie, Duffy. Right. Yeah. Same kind Call of deal. I, I think that they're just like megalomaniacs that think that they they're greater than they ever really were. Well, and, right. And don't get and the shoot wrong. themselves in the foot yeah. before they ever get started. And I think that that's exactly what happened to Leslie. Although I will say, I didn't hate him. No, there are moments where he's very good. He's a suave dude. He's you know big guy. Yeah. You know the action scenes like, were at the believable. End, the final scene, he's actually very good in that scene. Yeah. You know, and there are moments where he, and also it's also one of the few Bond movies where he actually does spying. Yes. Like he pretends to be. He goes undercover. You know, and uh, he like he like he's not terrible in it, but he's just. I mean, also, I'm sure it didn't help coming right after Sean Connery. Right. Oh yeah, that's there's a big there's a big shoes to fill. Is and also, but I, and also to his credit, having never acted before, considering that fact, he does really well. Yeah. You know, and because uh, there's a lot of you know athletes and musicians who get a big movie role, and they just you know they suck uncontrollably. Yes. You know. And uh, considering that fact, he actually does pretty well. There are a few things I think hurt the movie. One is the stupid opening uh, pre-credit sequence where it ends with him looking into the camera and says, well, this never happened to the other guy. See, I like, thought that's that was the, awesome. That's the worst moment in the movie. You think so? I thought that was a nice... There is a moment I think is worse than that. And that... Well, it all... That, that is uh, the montage where Tracy and, and James start to begin to fall in love and, and fucking Louis Ar- Louis Armstrong singing this right, that's it, my notes as well. fucking horrific fucking <laughs> I think they were just trying to, because Connery left, 
Like there's no title. Like there's the the, the title song is an instrumental. Yeah, that's the title song. Is we've got all the time in the world. And I and then they play it the, during the montage Doug's talking about, but they play it with lyrics during the opening credits. They don't play it with lyrics, right? And it's I think they were just trying too hard to do something different. It's so fucking random. I was sitting there yeah. watching it with Jody, and I paused it, and I turned to her, and I said, "What do you think?" She was like, "Is this a James Bond movie or not?" Because we at this point you're about twenty five minutes into it, and I and right. there's nothing about this that is James Bond at yeah. all. At all. And, and, I, and I think that's that was their point was they're like we're gonna yeah you know, in this movie he's gonna get married he's not just some you know assassin slash man whore like the other movies yeah and they still, I still think that they could have accomplished that and still cut that first thirty minutes down to a five minute little deal. And I think it would have been just... I would just say five minutes. I would say maybe like 15 10. minutes. They could definitely cut out chunks of it. But uh, it just... It's like by the time the Bond stuff started happening, I almost didn't give a shit. I had to like... Right. I had to like pause it and like refocus. And I was like, okay, where are they? How did he get here? Like, what's what have I missed in the yeah. first 45 minutes the, of the, the movie? The first act is, the, is definitely the weakest. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. yeah and, it's a, it's and I think so they were just trying to set up the importance of Tracy because... At the end, I mean, spoiler alert, the movie's 50 years old, but at the end, when she gets murdered, that was supposed to be the opening of Diamonds Are Forever. Right. The movie was supposed to end with the car driving away with Just Married written on the back. Oh. And then and then the Diamonds Are Forever was supposed to open, you know, two minutes later, and as she gets killed. And then, you, like, Diamonds Forever would have, you know, it would basically, like the movies now, they would have more continuity. Gotcha. But I think they had to... You know, when Lays and Me quit, you know, during post-production, they had to change certain things. And, you know, uh, but, I mean, I, but I think, I mean, you know, after the first act, I think it's very, I think it's very, the second, third act, I think are very well done. The scheme Like, is Bond's fantastic. actually, you know, he's spying the whole, the, uh, even though there's there's not a lot of gadgets and things, I, th- I think it's uh, excellently done. It's like, it's like an Austin Powers movie. Like if, right. if you watch, if you know Austin Powers, but you don't know this movie, you really do know this movie a lot better than you think you do. Right. You know That's because very true. because Blofeld is most certainly Doctor Evil. Oh, absolutely. And you know the henchmen all dress the same. He has this crazy fucking you know laboratory on top of a mountain. You know it's got like all these identifiable traits of like. Spy movies that have been, you know, made fun of or or inspired the, like these humorous movies, like in like yeah. Flint and and some of these other ones. But I would say much more recently, like the Austin Powers movies. And I appreciate that. I appreciate where that came from and how it's all constructed and how it's done. And I really, I like, I like you said, Lee. The second and third acts of this. They're not perfect, but they're pretty damn good. For they're 60, very strong. For 69, I was like, this yeah. is, uh, Directed by a guy who'd never made a movie before. He was like the assistant for a couple of Bond movies prior to this, am I right? He was the uh, uh, editor and the second unit director. There you go. Okay. Okay. But, you know, I, I like that kind of, you know, you, you wonder where that sort of shit comes from, and, and this is... This is part of where it comes from. You know? Right. And more so in this movie than really... I mean, yes, there are similar villains in a lot of other Bond movies. And yes, there are hot women that are like controlled by the villains or what have you. But th- this, the way this was done and Telly Savalas playing Blofeld I thought was great. Um, you know. <laughs> See, I, it, My only pro- problem with uh, the Blofeld thing is... Wouldn't he recognize Bond immediately? I couldn't understand why he didn't know who he was. Yeah, yeah, that's just something you kind of have to accept. I guess because it's the new guy. Because he said this wouldn't happen to the other guy. Yeah, maybe it's, the, maybe it's the new guy. I guess they just they 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 have these guys from the, that come up and they just name them James Bond. Yeah, like the, so yeah. John Doe is James Bond. James, right. You're James Bond, 007. You take on this. That would have been a cool way to start the movie. Yes, you're the new James Bond. We've lost the other James Bond. Yeah. 
if, if they were going to kind of make fun but of themselves name, or whatever. But, I, but that my name's sense. John Lassenby. No, not anymore. It's not, not anymore, pal. Yeah. It's James Bond. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, well, and that's actually something people believed up, up until Skyfall. But, like, you could go online and people actually thought it was just a code name. That every actor wasn't just a different person. That makes sense. And then they kind of killed that with Skyfall where they revealed that it actually is his name. You know, that it all is the same character. Yeah. I've never read any of the Ian Fleming books, so I wouldn't know. Maybe that's something that they... Well, this, this movie is... It's very close. As close as Casino Royale to being... Yeah, they're, they're the two closest. Like, this is... this The novel or, or novella or whatever on Her Majesty's Secret Service is basically this story. With a couple of minor changes, but it's very, very similar. Right. Well, for a guy who likes snow skiing, man, I love this, the skiing. Even so, I mean, there were some of the green screen close-ups I don't care for, but all the wide shots where they were actually skiing... Was real. I mean, it was well done. I loved it. Like, yes. Yeah. And you got to remember, these guys are wherever they shot that. This isn't. This isn't like today's filming where you just put a bunch of cameras on drones and everybody's in a warm hut somewhere. Right. Um, you know, or th this was back where they still had to carry the big sticks and they had the big cameras oh, yeah. and they're carrying that up there in the Swiss Alps. I bet that production was a son of a bitch. Yeah. Oh, there are, there are shots in the bobsled chase at the end that look straight up dangerous. Oh, yeah, like, absolutely. Like, I would, like, like, damn it. Yeah, like, the stunt guys hanging off the back of the bobsled and cameras zooming around. It looks like, yeah, somebody definitely could have got killed doing some of those. Yeah. And I, I do like Telly as Blofeld, but just, he, uh, like, Donald Pleasant's played him in, you know, You Only Live Twice beforehand. And that's the, basically the one that Dr. Evil's based on, the scar and, you know. He just, Telly seems kind of out of place compared to the other actors. Like, he's so suave in this. Too smooth, just, yeah, I was going to say. I disagree. I, d I think that Telly's the best because I he do too, suave. but he's so, he's so cool, he kind of makes the other ones look, you know, I don't know. It's like they, I, I don't know, the, you know, he's so different than the other ones. Yeah. I would agree he's definitely, the, he's the most like the character in the novel. In the novel, he's a really big like, you know, big, imposing guy. Definitely more so than someone like Donald Pleasance or, you know, the other actors. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how the Blofeld from the new Bond compares. Right. If, in fact, it is Blofeld, I mean. Uh, well, I mean... Who knows? Talk about least favorite. Spectre might be my least favorite because it is the worst thing a movie can be. It's boring. It's so funny, Jody and I were talking about it, and she's like, I don't remember anything about it. I was like, that's, exactly. that's what we say when you know it's a it's not a great movie, is when you, you come away and you can't remember like what you're supposed to remember from it. And and, and in that and then the Christoph Waltz version, like he him and Bond knew each other as kids. Like, what is that shit? Like, you know, I mean that just seems so like uh, like, after Pond's parents died, he went and lived with Blofeld's parents, and just like, I don't know. It's a total reach. It's like, it's, it's just... It's, yeah, it's, it's like, oh, like they knew each other dimensions. when they were like 12. It's like, shitty you know. storytelling is what it is. Yeah, yeah like, Spectre. fuck all. That, I'm pretty sure that's yeah. Spectre, yeah. See, I, I don't, yeah, I don't remember that one at all, which, you know... It's, yeah. it it's, it's, it's the most so recent good. one. It's the one we should know the best. Right. And I've watched it uh, twice, and I cannot, I can remember... I like I, sometimes I forget like oh shit Dave Bautista is in that movie he's the he's the henchman yeah the only way I can really watch it is like in sequence with the other ones like spend a fucking whole day watching right and, and then it's like things happen in it and I'm like oh okay that connects to that but if I just put it on and tried to watch it I wouldn't know what the fuck was going on oh it's a fucking snooze fest yeah do you, do you have that one there's some of the Brosnan ones that don't necessarily hold up especially compared to the you know the first couple. Craig ones. Yeah. But, uh, damn. I, you know, uh, they definitely hold up compared to Spectre. At least those movies aren't ungodly boring. Well, I think it just, and maybe some of it's the just the anticipation and, and the hype, and that's what kind of worries me about this newest one. I'm like, man. Yeah. You know, are they going to be able to just end this the right way and do it in a way that is going to make everybody happy? Of course not. But, no, and, and let's be honest, Remy Malik is Dr. Nutt. If he's not, then what are we even doing here? 
exactly. You know. Yeah, what if he wasn't? What if he's just some dude named Phil? You know, just like, yeah, because he, I mean, it basically it looks like Dr. Nut. He has to be. Yeah. And I'm yeah. fine with, I'm fine with that, but I just, like I say, you know, like they've done with, with the Blofeld over the years, you know, and using all these different characters or, or different actors for him. You know where he's loosely kind of connected. He he is this international villain in a lot of these movies, but in a lot of them he's characterized differently. You know, and, yeah. And and I'm hoping that whatever they decide to do with with Doctor No and, and and this last one is, like I say, it's got to be better than Spectre. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, let's hope so. Because if it's not, then it's really going to tarnish Daniel Craig's legacy as Bond, as far as I'm concerned. Unfortunately, yeah. even even though I mean he is like he was my least favorite choice to be Bond, but man, turned in quickly turned into like oh, one yeah. of my favorites. Dude. Oh, when they, when they cast him, him, I was like, wait, the guy from Road to Perdition? Yeah. I was like, uh, yeah, but then uh, yeah, as soon as I saw Casino Royale, I was like, oh no, this is the guy. Yeah, he's perfect. And now I'm having a hard time. I'm having a hard time, like trying to envision anybody else doing it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we'll see. Anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Right. But to get back to the movie, I, I would recommend like, right. a lot of people who like bomb movies have not seen this movie. You know, I don't think it's one of the more you know, like it, like you know, Goldfinger or Moonraker that played on TV a lot. For some reason, this would never play on TV when I was growing up. You know. Or not nearly as much where I could catch it. Yeah, but uh, I, I would I'd recommend people check this movie out. Yeah, it's got. I mean, I can't really introduce it without kind of giving it away, right? Yeah, it's like Bond is is out and kind of meets this guy named Draco, who is kind of a dirty businessman. And Draco basically offers him a bunch of money to fuck his daughter well and make her fall in love with him because she's a wildcat, yeah. right? All right. And so then they kind of meet and then they kind of fall in love and then it just got he just kind of leaves. Right. And um comes to like a an allergy compound full of hot ass. Run by fucking Blofeld. Yes. Yeah. And um, there's curling. You know, yep. they do some rooftop curling. There's some, um, you know, Bond on skis. I think something that would stop people from enjoying it. It's so late 60s, it's ridiculous. It really is. And it's long. It's, it's so fucking long, man. Oh, it really yeah. is. It really didn't need to be nearly as long. It's like, it's no, almost two and a half hours that. long, isn't it? Yeah. If not, it's close. If not, it's 220. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, I would agree. You could cut it down some. You know, Blofeld has a plan very similar to like a Dr. Evil. You know, we're going to make everything. We can, you know, make things infertile. People. Yeah, are, but I, it's basically germ warfare. Yeah, he's made, you know. And then using like his mental, you know, kind of. I don't know what the word is. Like, kind of like hypnotism, I guess. Sure, his hypnotism over these girls that he's brought to this allergy compound, and then he is able to control them. They turn into the angels of death, which sounds really cool, but it's kind of a letdown, to be quite honest. Yeah, um, yeah. They don't once, yeah, they don't really come back to that, which uh, sucked. I was like, oh yeah, here we go. Oh wait, nothing happens. Fuck. <laughs> We're going back to the Draco thing for a minute. Yeah. What about at the end where he just knocks his daughter out by punching her in the face? He, pu- he punches her right in the face and puts her in a helicopter. And then he looks at his hench and he goes, spare the rod, huh? Yes. It's... Which would definitely not fly now. Well, there's a, there's several things I noticed in this movie that are a little bit questionable. Oh, sure. Yeah. You know, Bond, remember initially, like, she, when... He sees her in that hotel room and it, near the beginning of the movie. She says something. He smacks the fuck out yeah, of her right off the bat. Yeah, he's, he's like, "Nah, we're not doing that or something." I was like, I can, "That's I can weird." Be more persuasive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah that would never. I mean, and he, he like grabs her. He was like squeezing her. He's yeah. Like, so just, more, yeah. That would never happen now. Yeah. Like, it just. 
just a lot of questionable yeah. stuff. And also, the, going back, that is something that is more like the character in the novel. He is, I mean, the novel. He's he's not really a spy. He's basically he's just a murderer. He's a murderer. Like, that's and why he has a license to kill. They're not. Yeah. He's not asking him to go arrest Blofeld. They want him to go shoot him in the face. Yeah, yeah. you know, and get as much. I mean, ass he's not as like on the way. Terry right. Grant. I yeah. like that. Yeah, bad bad guy. Like in the books, is what I've always heard. Is like he's yeah. not he's not like a smooth nice guy. He's he's mean and he hates women. Yeah, by, by any means necessary. And he's extremely violent yeah. towards women and men. You know, and I guess I guess for a different time. You know, right? Exactly. Yeah. That, like I said, that's that's just some late '60s stuff that just wouldn't fly now. Yeah. Absolutely not. But it's, you know, the avalanche part looks awesome. fucking amazing. I was going to say that. Like, that didn't even look like stock footage. That looked dude, it like made me it. so fucking dizzy, dude, watching, a, like, a lot of the scenes in this one, the action scenes, some of the fight scenes, the way the cameras are, are spinning around, it just made you dizzy. The avalanche scene yeah. absolutely made me dizzy. The bobsled scene, when they would have shots of Blofeld looking back, I'm like, God dang, man, I feel like I'm a... Get dizzy on my couch. Yeah, exactly. Um, which I get, you yeah, know. That's, uh, that's the obnoxious uh, letterbox review. This movie gave me vertigo. Yeah, yeah. It does in some parts that made me dizzy. Yeah. Um, you know, but all in all, man, and I, I, I liked it. I enjoyed it. You know, it's like all Bond movies, it's got some really lighthearted stuff. A lot of, like, you know, one-liners and, you know, Lazenby saying, you know, witty little quibs, you know, here and there after something would happen. Um, you know, and some of them worked, some of them didn't. Right. Um, but ultimately, the I think what separates this movie from all us, like we've discussed, is Bond getting married and then how that, um, how that kind of goes. Right. You know, watching the movie and, and I kept trying to put myself in that, like, you know, if you didn't know kind of state of mind. Right. And that would have been absolutely shocking to have gone and seen that movie and then watched her die at the end. I would have been like, wow. Yeah, but the only weird thing is they in Diamonds Are Forever, they never, you know, which is the one where Sean Connery came back. They never mentioned the one that between Lays and Being Moore. Yeah. They never mention her. Yeah. She's not even, like, they don't mention her again until your, uh, For Your Eyes Only, which I think is 80, 1980. It's a while. So it was 10 years before she got another mention, which is very strange. Even for a, a series with a loose continuity as Bond, do you think she would have at least gotten a couple more mentions? Yeah. I'm, I'm interested to see. I wasn't able to find anything, um, but I, it did. that avalanche didn't look like stock footage, man. It looked like somebody, you know, they, they dynamited it, created it, and shot it from afar. But then here we go. The they wanted to do a spot where Bond uh, skis off a cliff, pulls the parachute, and they didn't. In that time, they didn't have the resources for it, so they scrapped it. They later used it in the Spy Who Loved Me, used the exact same thing. But I, so I'm thinking, well, if they didn't have the resources for a stunt guy to freaking ski off a cliff and pull a parachute, then they probably didn't have the resources to explode an avalanche and right. shoot it for whatever. So maybe they got that. I don't know. Those are the things. Being a filmmaker, I looked at that and I'm like... Unless it was it uh, really a, controlled, well. a controlled avalanche they were going to blow up for safety reasons. True. Maybe that's... Yeah, and maybe they... Yes, they're like, hey, we're going to do this anyway, so why don't you guys come up there yeah. and film in a second unit? That's, that's the only thing I can think so of. See, look at you, Lee. That freaking film education coming back, coming back for us. There we go. Hey, I got a really funny thing here. Uh, during the filming at the Piz Gloria, uh, the cast and crew would receive their per diems in cash, right? So Lazenby is like saving up his per diems because he's not spending it, you know? So Telly Savalas sees him with a suitcase just stuffed, you know, in full passing, money, yeah. stuffed full of money, invites him to his uh, poker game, his late night poker game that he held for the crew members and uh, promptly relieved. Lazenberry, Lazenby of all that money. You can call him Lazenberry. <laughs> it really doesn't matter okay, at this anyway. point. <laughs> all right. All right. So anyway, uh, Harry Saltzman, the producer, heard that Telly 
uh, took all his money and went back the next night, uh, even against Telly. And I tell he was like, no, nah, I don't want to play you. Sabalas is like, no, no, no. He plays him, get, wins all his money back, and then says, you are never to victimize my boy again. And took all his money and gave it back to Lazenby. <laughs> I can't even That's imagine. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but think about that. So he said, uh, it said, uh, these regular late night poker games, those dudes were beasts. Man, oh, yeah. I, dude, I, I mean, think about that. Savalas in 69? Who loves you, baby? Come on. Think about, hey, and Lee, and you, don't, fucking you, man. you don't party or drink or do anything. You're a healthy dude. And think about badass killers. Like, we yeah. were getting four or five hours of sleep, and we were dead, and we were not oh, yeah. drinking there was and no, partying all There night. was no partying after we got done shooting for 12 hours. And these guys, the, you know, Telly's going and shooting, and of course, I don't know, those guys are probably in, they probably don't, they probably don't work all that much, because they're not, they just show up, they do their lines, and then they go back and hang out. Like, maybe they get to sleep, maybe it's different, I guess. I don't know, man, I, I just, I, any But then again, that maybe they had, you know... You know, some recreational substances to help them stay up all night. Well, yeah, and also, you know, if Telly Savalas, if I'm filming a movie for the first time and Telly Savalas invites me to his uh, late night poker game, am I going? It's Telly Savalas. Of course I'm going. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Anything to, yeah, anything. You can have all the money, but just remember me for the next movie. A couple things we hadn't discussed. Diana Rigg, who, who is... Who turned Tracy Bond or the Contessa Di Vincenzo, played by Alina Tyrell uh, from Game of Thrones? Um, I mean, she was one of my favorite characters on that series. She was fucking amazing. She was. She I think was. she just passed away last just late last year. She did. She finished shooting Edgar Wright's new movie and then passed away like a week later. Yeah, she she was blazing hot in 1969, and I thought she like you discussed, Lee. I thought she was a really Unique kind of a Bond chick. Um, because, like you said, she actually ha- serves a purpose in this. Um, other than just looking good and whatever. But, uh, I guess that's it. That's all I got. On this movie. It was great. I mean, it, it really was. I, I text, uh, I text Lee and said the most boring movie. That was during act number, uh, during the first act and I was just playing around. Get past the first... 40 minutes and you'll be yeah. if you if you like old Bond movies you'll come around quickly right if you don't get to Switzerland it's all good right but it, but if if you need something that starts a little bit faster this is certainly not going to be for you no not it so I um hey but, uh, I watched Vice Adam McKay's film a couple weeks ago or a couple months ago they all run together you kind of bash the movie I disagree with you. I think that it was good. And I think I'm going to start off with the very weird uh, credit sequence in the middle of the movie. I got what he was doing. He was like, that's where Dick Cheney's fucking political career should have ended. And it didn't. Everybody gets it. I, li- I liked it. I liked what he did. I, just... I, liked, I liked the socks on the penis thing. The complete random, hey... You know, just trying to show the audience that he could really work people over. I don't know. I liked it. Christian, Be- the, the the performances were great. Bale, that might be his best performance ever. Ever. He's that good at it. Yeah. But the way that the movie is put together is silly, dude. It, ah. It's like you you it worked. All his little tricks worked in the big short. Tried to do the same shit in this, and it don't fucking work, dude. I agree with you. It's like he's he's selling me the same style of storytelling, and it just it doesn't work. I agree. (coughs) Excuse me. That's why I didn't like it. I agree with you there. In that kind of thing, it should be a little bit more serious and more linear narrative. Sure, I get it. Um, But I enjoyed it thoroughly. I actually really enjoyed it thoroughly. Okay. I mean, you know. You like shit because you can't smell it. Right? <laughs> yeah, but momentarily. Yeah, okay. Just saying. All right, but, um... Is that all you saw? 
That's oh yeah, that's all I was. I'm not gonna get into okay. anything else. All right. I watched uh, Kong Skull Island because I'm trying to get amped up for Godzilla vs Kong, and uh, I'd only seen it once before, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think I loved everything about it, Brie Larson, especially. Yes. And um, yeah, I, I I really just enjoyed everything about it. I you know, like John C. Riley's character is just amazing. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah, he really is good in that movie. You know, and I, I like I, I like it the exact amount I dislike Peter Jackson's King Kong. Yeah. <laughs> it takes all of the like. You know, it's it's just a, uh, it's its own thing. You know, and that's yeah. that's what I liked about it is it's not trying to be something else other than it's what not, it it's is. It's not a remake of the one from the '30s. It's not. It doesn't take you know, itself too seriously. It looks no. it looks great. Kong is awesome. You it's know, a fun monster movie. Yes, that doesn't take itself too seriously. Exactly. But takes itself seriously enough. It's the good. other monsters are really great. They're the, awesome. The, the giant spider in the bamboo forest. That's one of my favorite sequences. Yeah. When Riley's like, they sound like birds, but they're fucking ants. I about piss myself. It's one of the best lines I've ever seen in a fucking movie. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I just, I thoroughly enjoyed that, man. I, that's a good fucking flick, man. A good, and it's one, the way that it's done, you know, a lot of these big monster movies, man, they're one watchers, man. You, you know, they're not made like they used to be where you can go back and watch it and still enjoy it. I think I could watch this thing probably once a week and it would be just fine. Yeah, it's very entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. That's all, that, that's all I saw. Okay, I cannot wait for uh, uh, Godzilla vs. Kong. That has to be seen in the movie theater. I'm hoping so. I can't watch that on my fucking phone. <laughs> no. God, ugh. Yeah, but we'll see. But you will. Well... If I have to, by God, I'll watch. I'll watch whatever I can, however I can, if I have to. Right, fair enough. But I, 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 I let me change that. I prefer not to. I guess I should say. Hundred percent. Yeah. But is that all you watched? Yes, sir. All right. I watched a movie, uh, kind of a movie I'd never seen before. Uh, I'm a huge what? John Frankenheimer what? fan, but I'd never what? seen Seven Days in May from 1964. Wait, what? In, Ho, ho, ho. Whoa, was whoa, that? Whoa. What? A movie you have never seen before? A movie I've never seen. Oh, my God. Let me say it one more time. <laughs> Hold on. I watched a movie I'd never seen before. Is this the one that with Kevin Costner? No, no. No, this was made in 64. Oh, 64. Okay. All right. Yeah. This, oddly enough, it starts with a, uh, it starts with people fighting outside the White House. Oh. And hitting each other with signs. Uh, see, Kurt, uh, Kurt Douglas plays a, a, a Marine Colonel who's the director of the Joint Chiefs. He basically sets up their meetings and you know, intercepts their phone calls and things like that. And Burt Lancaster is an Air Force General. He's the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And basically through these basically, uh, Kurt Douglas acting basically as a detective, he finds out that uh, uh, Burt Lancaster, a certain amount of senators... Uh, various members of the Joint Chiefs are going to basically start a uh, stage a, a, a bloodless coup against the president. They're basically going to have him assassinated and then bring in the vice president as president who's basically going to be their puppet. And the reason why they're doing this is because the president is signing uh, peace accords with the Soviet Union. Yeah, I think the movie's supposed to take place in 1970. And... Uh, and and these the generals they're so against this they're going to stage this coup. And the weird thing is is Kurt Douglas as the hero he agrees with them. Like politically he agrees that they're right that we should not sign the peace accords and dismantle our nuclear weapons. And but he's like it doesn't matter because it's wrong. He's like I'm in the military. I, my job is not to make policy; it's to enforce policy. Yeah. And uh, and the weird thing is the hero and the villain completely agree with each other politically, but. You know, that at the end of the day, you know, Kurt Douglas is just, he's a Marine that he's just going to do what he's got to do. He's going to do the right thing. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of, it's sort of mentioned like as, uh, you know, Frankenheimer's sort of 60s, you know, his high point, the Manchurian Candidate, Seven Days of May and then Seconds. It's sort of sometimes referred to as his trilogy of great films. And I've never seen it. And it's no, and it's not as good as the Manchurian Candidate, which I think is, 
his best movie, but it's very, very good. If you, uh, a lot of people wouldn't like it because it's in black and white and other things, but I highly recommend it. Okay. It's oddly, it oddly seems like something that could happen right now. You know. It sounds... And a lot of that has to do with the fact that the script was written by Rod Serling. Oh. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Highly recommend it. But that's all I watched. Great. Well, let's, uh, we've got a manager's choice this week. We do. Uh, it's a. Uh, uh, it ties into our main movie. It's a movie that everybody can watch as long as you have Hulu. It's a documentary called Becoming Bond, and it's about George Lazenby becoming Bond. But it's not just a talking head documentary. Whenever they explain something, it cuts to these, and it's sort of done tongue in, tongue in cheek. It's very comedic. You know, they sort of like these actors, and some of them are fairly well known actors. Like I, uh, you know. They basically acting out what he's saying. You know, how he went from being this used car dealer to James Bond just by basically lying his ass off. Saying, oh yes, I have all this acting experience and I do all this stuff and you know. And it's sort of, and it explains it from his point of view, but you understand that even in the documentary, his point of view is very skewed by his own bullshit. Yeah. But it's, it's very entertaining. It's called Becoming Bond. It's on Hulu. Nice. Great. Well, let's get, we're going to do something new. We're going to go to our Facebook page, do a little segment called Bulletin Board, where we can kind of interact with us, all these guys that are posting up on the uh, page. First of all, we did miss this in the news. Lee, are you going to Leland on June 19th, 2020, to, to the Maximum Overdrive screening on the set? I don't, probably not. Who the, who are those special guests? I've lost. I've, 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 there are two guys who are just sort of in the movie. <laughs> I was gonna say I don't remember those guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Probably I do. Not. I do like your caption. Sounds like a good idea for a road trip. Although if, if they wanted to be all authentic, instead of a soda, you'd get an ACDC album and some cocaine. Because <laughs> it says it says. Uh, Watch Maximum Overdrive, where it was filmed. This poster is on the Facebook page. Uh, yeah. In Leland, North Carolina, outdoor movie screening, special guests, and soda. Yeah, I would like cocaine and, and, a, and a signed ACDC album. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. That way you would feel like you were in the movie. Absolutely. If I lived closer, I had, fuck, I'd go. Oh yeah, if, I, if it wasn't on the other side of the state, I would definitely yeah, go. If it was an hour and a half, if it was two hours away, I'd fucking go. Absolutely. But it's five hours away. Right, exactly. So I'm not going. <laughs> that's what, when you make that job, that's when you realize North Carolina's a very long state. Yeah. Uh, James Stiegel always posts up these, um, it's like, a, it's pretty cool, man. A lot of people interact with it. They it puts up six movies. And has everybody choose which one they like the best. Uh, we don't have to go into detail. The uh, the only thing I would say, James, is that some of them are kind of random. I don't know how he pulls them or how he plugs them. So if you would like to tell me, feel free to send us a DM. But uh, he's got The Hand That Rocks the Cradle, Jackie Chan's First Strike, The Relic, Cuffs, Rush, and... Um, I can't even think of that last one. It's got Ray Liotta and Lauren Holly in it. Uh, it was Turbulence. Turbulence. Turbulence, yeah. I forgot that movie existed. Uh, yeah, that's how much I like that one. I, then I'd have to say out of those, either First Strike or Rush, man. I kind of like yeah. that Rush movie. Uh, yeah, that's a good movie. Although, Rebecca De, uh, De Mornay can... Pre- De Mornay. <laughs> she can breastfeed me anytime. <laughs> She probably still looks good. She probably looks like Tanya Roberts, to be quite honest. Laying around somewhere looking shut like... that whore look, mouth of yours. Looking like the Cheshire cat. <laughs> uh, and we uh, we put up, we posted up every James Bond movie. And it looks like Octopushy is going to be the uh, winner what? Although my my, my choice, view, uh, License to Kill, was very close. Yes, it was very close. Never Say Never Again was third. Casino Royale, fourth. Doctor No, fifth. Goldeneye, fifth. And From Russia with Love, fifth. And nobody else voted. Which is very surprising that we didn't get any votes. Like Moonraker. 
I, I liked Moonraker. Anyway, Casey says, my real choice, uh, uh, my real choice is Octopussy, but I voted for Never Say Never Again because it's an imposter Bond movie, but I liked it when I was in sixth grade, but mostly I wanted to hear Doug go on a rant about it. Okay. <laughs> We're going to make that happen. <laughs> we'll make that happen for sure. That's fan interaction, by God. Yeah. We're going to do that. And you wa- hey, you rewatched uh, Lock, Stock, and Smoke, Two Smoking Barrels. That's a good one. I did. I did. Yeah. Very good movie. And I also, I, let me uh, throw something else at the very end. There's a, a documentary on Prime called The Governor about the guy who played uh, Barry the Baptist on, in Lock, Stock. He was a, uh, he was a bare knuckle boxer in England, and that dude was just a monster. Nice. If you watch the documentary, he was just terrifying. He ripped a guy's throat out with his teeth. At one point, you know, just, yeah. He looks like a fucking monster. It, it's a very good documentary, though. It's called nice. The Governor. Okay. He died right after they finished filming Lockstock. He had cancer while they were filming it. Mm. Well, and uh, Gerald Allison uh, posted up uh, something that's, uh, uh, that's obvious on all of our minds. Uh, family Video is closing and liquidating all their assets. Yeah. And that's all the Family Videos. The yeah, there were like 400 and some, I think, Nationwide that we're still operational, and there is one in in Hickory. Yeah, and, and I um, drove by there, and the sign was closing. Everything's on sale. Yeah, that's yeah, they sell the TVs, everything. Yeah, that well, that that is the end then of yeah, yeah, you know, any kind yep. of like video stores, I guess, other than ours, huh? And uh, Chris. Christopher Zio, man, he always posts. He always posts some funny stuff. He's got a picture of uh, Quentin Tarantino, but it says manager seen and spoken to by Quentin Carantino, and he's got the Karen hair. That's great, man. God, Christopher, keep posting those funny things, man. That's hilarious. But yeah, anyway, guys, if you guys want uh, us to talk about stuff, uh, we're gonna be doing this as a new thing. Uh, you want? You got? You have any? beefs with us or uh, conversations, uh, we're going to be doing this bulletin board and we're actually going to be doing it. Oh gosh, and I got to talk to you real fast, Lee. We're actually going to probably be doing this at the beginning of the show. That uh, that way, you know, you don't have to right. wait an hour and a half to listen to uh, what we have to say about your post. But what, hey, what are you going to do with all those VHS tapes, homeboy? Uh, I'm just going to keep them. Where are you going to put all this fucking VHS tape? Well, obviously, where I are you to going to watch them? Because Bonnie's dad for Christmas bought uh, this giant collection of VHS tapes and a lot of records. I already have a shelf for the for the albums, but I have to get another shelf for the VHS tapes. Okay, I just want to inform you that we are now into Ultra HD 4K. So again, yes, I'm but there's some movies the that are, are not gonna... on Ultra HD. I have I have some movies that never made it past videotape. Okay, uh, well, all right. <laughs> You guys, well, you guys actually do watch VHS still, don't you? Sometimes, yeah. That is a that is a true true movie buff. I, I, I don't want to talk about VHS fucking tapes anymore. That's because it makes you feel old, doesn't it? No, it's because mine are all fucking gone. <laughs> <laughs> all right, God damn that's it. right. All right, well, that's it for this week. Next week we're back. We are doing Doug's favorite: A View to a Kill. And then we will, you know, give and take, probably have talked our uh, everybody into the ground about James Bond by the end of the next week. So what we'll do is we will put my favorite, Skyfall, and uh, the Tales from the Video Store uh, post-Octopussy on the same one. And so we can just kind of get into both of those and get into... We've got, listen, we got lots of stuff coming. We're going to... We've got Best Bond, your favorite Bond... We've got favorite Q, we've got favorite M, we've got all sorts of uh, stuff to talk about. So, hey, we want, we, this James Bond. Uh, favorite villain, favorite henchman. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Favorite death. I mean, there's, we could go on and on. We're going to, we're going to have you know, three great ep- uh, episodes just like this Well, two more episodes just like this one, jam packed with exciting stuff. Come on back next week. Thanks for listening. And congratulations again to our own Doug Wall. For getting the hitch. Let's hope that Blofeld doesn't really drive by anytime soon. Well. And take you out of the race. Well.
It's still early. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure you check out our website, videostoretales.com. Subscribe to us on YouTube and at Spreaker. Listen to us anywhere you can listen to podcasts. Spotify, Apple iTunes, Google Play. We're everywhere. Check out our Facebook page and our Facebook group for all sorts of great polls, votes, and other information. We really do appreciate you listening and keep watching those movies.